Welcome back. Great to have you with us. Now, she's one of the most popular stars of Strictly Come Dancing. But just a few years ago, Diane Boswell was in the grip of an eating disorder so severe it actually threatened to destroy her dance career and also left her dangerously close to a heart attack. Yes. With over a million people in the UK currently suffering from an eating disorder, Diane has joined forces with specialist Dr Chucks to tackle many misconceptions surrounding uh, disorders with eating. Now, the pair join us now. Thank you for coming on. Um, now, Dr Chucks, you've put this um, book together, Eating Disorders Don't Discriminate, and there's lots of stories in there. And, Diane, you've decided to share your story um, in that book. And I can imagine this, you know, helping so many people right now because... You, you've just been telling us you're extremely busy, but Diane, can we just start with you? When did it become apparent that you, you had an eating disorder? I think when it starts to consume your life. Right. So you wake up of a morning and the first thing you think of is, what am I going to eat? How many calories are going to be in that? How much do I need to exercise to burn off those calories? Um, it, it literally is like a planned thing in your mind that... Um, doesn't go away and that's when you start to go oh this this is a problem because I'm not thinking of anything else other than that it was yours driven though by the career choice of dancing and obviously size was important and they're weighing you at a young age mm. I and mean, it was kind of it was it deep in your subconscious wasn't it I do believe it comes from when I was quite a young girl and um, obviously growing up in the dance world you're um, thought to look a certain way and you see all these other, you know, beautiful girls um, dancing and you kind of go, I want to look like that and I, I want to be winning like they are and they look a certain way so I feel like I should look that way. Um, so I think, yeah, it was, it was something from a really uh, young age and I also went on to, you know, dance in dance companies and one of those things was like a weekly weigh-in and I can't tell you how terrifying that was and how much that played on my mind for the whole week, really, when you knew that a weigh-in was coming up. So, yeah, it was, it was quite intense. How bad did it get for you? It got to a point where uh, I didn't want to dance anymore. I was afraid to go on stage. I felt physically ill, the thought that my body... I don't even know if I can get through an hour show. Um, and I was known as, like, the Energizer Bunny. I think that's what I was casted as. You know, she has so much energy, she's... Um, always full of life, and that really went away from me. And I, I had nothing to give on the dance floor, and that really terrified me, and I just couldn't do it anymore. Well, you need, you know, you're a dancer, you need a lot of energy yeah. to, to be a dancer. How did you get through it, Diane? Because, you know, you're, you're, you're given all these performances every single day, and you, you've just got nothing in you. Yeah, exactly. Um, I... I have quite a strong mind, so I just kept telling myself, you can do it, you just keep going, Diane, keep going. Um, but it was just, it was a certain breaking point where my body physically couldn't do it anymore, and that's when I knew I had to go and, and get help and, and talk to people. Dr Chucks, let's, let's just kind of familiarise ourselves with, with the language and everything here. There's so much of it going on, but Absolutely. the difference between anorexia and bulimia, what, what are the, the prime differences between the two? So anorexia nervosa is a restrictive... Um, eating disorder, just like bulimia nervosa. And the only difference is, or one of the key differences, there's a weight threshold for anorexia nervosa, um, and whereas bulimia nervosa, that's not the case. Often, people with anorexia nervosa, uh, like I said, they're kind of um, smaller bodied, or they are lower on a threshold, if that makes sense. Whereas bulimia nervosa, again, very secretive illness. Um, actually, probably one of the most secretive, because often, it's hard to detect. And statistics on this are kind of um, inconsistent because we don't actually know how many are suffering from it. So the key differences are the weight threshold um, because you can still have, for example, you can still have purging, which is, can ex you can experience that in anorexia and bulimia nervosa. So that's not, that's not the key difference. Purging is key... when you, so you eat a lot and then you vomit. Not necessarily yeah. vomit. That's a common mis misconception. Okay. It's anything to counteract an input of nutrition, so it could be, for example, I don't know, you know, exercise or whatever it happens to be. Um, yeah, so those are the key differences. And, and that's, why, I suppose, why you've covered so many stories in your book, because Absolutely. so many stories are, are, are so different, aren't they, Dr Chooks? Absolutely. So the book is basically Eating Disorders Don't Discriminate, um, a real labour of love. By the way, can I just say thank you for talking about eating disorders outside of Eating Disorders Awareness Week, which finished on Sunday, because right. often there's radio silence for a whole year, until eating disorder is such a um, serious issue and 
In the book, we cover five key eating disorders, OSFED, which not many people know about, although it's the most common eating disorder Sorry, category. What's it called again? OSFED, OSFED, so other specified feeding and eating disorders. Then most, second most common, binge eating disorder. Third most common, bulimia nervosa, which um, Diane's piece is really powerful. Um, then fourth most common, which gets a lot of airtime, understandably so, because it claims the lives, unfortunately, yeah. of more mental health illnesses than any others, anorexia nervosa. And then the fifth one, ARFID, Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, which was coincidentally the theme of this year's Eating Disorders Awareness Week. Yeah. Tell you, these darn phones have a lot to answer for because there's calorie counters on them, there's step counters, then there's all the social media where you're looking at photographs, you're comparing and contrasting. Mm -hmm. For, for young people, and not just girls, young boys as well, around that 16 years old age group, I'm hearing a lot of stories of a, a lot of eating disorders, particularly in that area. It seems like the phone's got a, a lot to do with that, but is that the big danger area question to both of you? I think um, we are, you know, obviously looking at things and seeing, oh, I could look like that or I could do that, and it is so accessible for us nowadays. Um, which I, I definitely think could have an, an impact for sure. Mm. Um, I think more... Think? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think there is... Th there's this thing that social media causes eating disorders. It doesn't by itself. Mm. It normally sits on top of other things. And, for example, genetics, which we don't often talk about, but genetics is very strongly... And the book does highlight the importance of genetics in the development of eating disorders, but also the social determinants of health. Now we're seeing a lot of poverty-induced disordered eating. So right. people, you know, maybe cutting here, cutting there, and that can lead to an expression of more serious issues such as eating disorders. Um, I think it's going to be quite popular today. Is that, you know, you, you're telling me about stories that you've heard. Mm -hmm. you know, um, Mr Chooks, if anybody's watching today, what should they be looking out for yeah. um, if they think that their child or somebody yeah. close to them has an yeah. eating disorder? And where can they go for that sort of help? So, to be honest, it depends on the eating disorder and it depends on the person. Those are the, they can express differently. But I think the key three ways, I guess, to break it down, to make it more simple is behavioural signs, physical signs, and then psychological signs. So let's start with psychological, with things like anxiety around meals or preoccupation with foods that they may not have had before. Mm. Then there's physical signs, for example, fatigue, or, for example, coincidentally on blood tests, if it's men, they might have lower testosterone or, you know, other things such as... Um, and then you have behavioural signs, such as maybe preoccupation with weighing yourself or, um, you know, obsession with uh, calories, as, someone, as you've mentioned, Craig. Um, but just, in, th th to be honest, there's so many different yeah. signs and symptoms. And where can they go for help? Um, I mean, we're going to put some on our website, but where, Thank where would you, you suggest no, people go really for help? I really appreciate that. Um, for help, I would suggest... Uh, Beat Charity is a good place to start. Okay. Also, contacting your general practitioner, your GP. Okay. That's really, really important because an eating disorder loves nothing more than to suffer in silence. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, to then put the person through suffering in silence and to isolate people. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to keep the lines of communication open. If there's one random aunt that you you trust and talk to, go to that aunt and open up to her or them yeah. because that is important. Um, thank you, do, thank do you, Doctor Chooks. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and thank you for sharing your story, you. Diane. Yeah. You know, Before it's very we powerful. go, Diane, as well. I mean, the numbers suggest that it's just getting worse and worse. Um, there's a lot of parents watching now, looking at the kids, not knowing what to do, not knowing if it's going to end. Look, you've got through it. I did. Look at you yeah. now. You know, your career's going great. Uh, what message would you give to all those worried parents at home at the moment? Um, I think, for me, it was a, a big realisation of, like, your body is your tool and mm -hmm. we can't do anything without it and it makes us feel happy and when we're just feeling terrible and not doing the right things to our body, amazing things don't happen. When I started to really appreciate my body for what it is, I ended up getting strictly. All these magical things mm -hmm. happened because I was, I was just enjoying my body for what it is and not right. trying to be something that okay. it's not. Great so. advice. Great look, advice. It, Thanks, I, Diane. I know I mentioned kids. It's just that they're, they're, that's the spike in numbers of younger people. Obviously, it affects yeah. adults as well. Yeah. It's yeah. everyone, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you or a loved one are struggling with an eating disorder and you'd like more information, please head to our free This Morning app and there'll be lots of information there that you may need.